In honor of Scorpio season, I will be doing a few videos on some dark-sided Scorpio famous people, starting with Kris Jenner. Kris Jenner, Pimp Mother of the Year. Now, before I get into Chris's chart, here are some dark-sided Scorpio traits, especially those that she embodies. Manipulative, exploitative, being a Swingali, controlling, power-hungry, vampiric, vengeful, low-down, nasty, hypersexual, abusive, demonic. So here's her chart right here. She has a stellium in Libra consisting of Mars, Mercury, and Neptune. She's a Virgo rising, as you can see, late degrees. Sun, Saturn, and Venus in Scorpio. Her north node is in Sagittarius in the third house. Chiron in Aquarius. South node in Gemini in the ninth. She got a Cancer moon intercepted in the 10th, which is very interesting and makes a lot of sense considering her light. She has a Leo stellium consisting of Uranus, Pluto, and Jupiter in the 11th. So most recently, Kris Jenner has been involved in a scandal involving Ray J. So Ray J was infuriated when he saw Kris Jenner on a show where she took a lie detector test and the sex tape came up. And basically, I think she said she didn't orchestrate it or had nothing to do with it. And Ray J clapped back and he was saying, no, she orchestrated it. And she even had us do a second one and all that. And, uh, you know, Chris Jenner orchestrating this sex tape is very typical of a dark-sided Scorpio mom, especially on the very dark-sided end. So I'm going to play some snippets of this video where Ray J is ranting about this whole situation with the sex tape. Actually, let me make sure I'm sharing my sound. Things with me, you know what I'm saying? And what's crazy is that, hit me with the light. What's crazy is that like, I'm supposed to be on vacation. I'm in the Dominican Republic and I'm, and I'm looking at somebody mama lying and just really just laughing at niggas like you're gonna try to crush my career make me look stupid when you know you was the mastermind and then go out to dinner later and eat eat with your rich friends huh it's just like well we fucked him over again <laughs> we always fucking ray over he's our little like he's our little like like escape goat when we want to just feel like we like special and somebody hurt it's like stop like you got me fucked up i start to think to myself all right if you already believe what these people are saying about me is true, then what the fuck am I, what, what, what do I gotta lose? Then to tell my truth and tell you what it really is, like, and I'm not telling you, I'm telling this, so when my kids grow up, they know the truth. Like when we was young and y'all manipulated us to do the shit, I take full responsibilities for the act, I was lit. We made a fucking lot of money, I get it. But we, we together, like, Y'all really think that y'all was going, I don't know. You know what? Here's how I look at it. Your lawyer, Marty, right? Every time somebody talks shit about y'all of this magnitude, y'all always cease and desist. Y'all shut that shit down. Y'all tried to make Black China look crazy, right? Because you felt like you had the facts. Crickets. Kim ain't responded to this at all because she know what she did. And Chris, you know you ran the play. I'm going crazy tonight as far as like, like my energy because I'm so like disgusted at sitting back and waiting for what? Like waiting for what? I can't see the comments. I don't give a fuck about what nobody say. All I care about is my daughter and my son growing up like damn, Pops is 100. Like Pops would never put I'm so sorry that I didn't, like that you've been going through this shit for this long, dog. If not, I give no fucks, fam. Like, I should have did the math about this long time ago. Chris Jenner didn't have me spooked. They like, you better not say nothing. You see the you see the contract. I go in the safe. I look at the contract. I don't even got a gag order on y'all. Y'all don't even, I don't even got to be quiet. 
the fucking. I told myself, I'm like, all right, I'm going to just be calm and just do this shit. Fuck that. If y'all, nigga, if y'all see my rants before, which I'm not happy about, and y'all think that I'm going to let this white lady lie on what she did and put together, and I'm going to just sit back after you know how lit I get and know how aggressive I might be on accident, then you got me fucked up. Yo, check it in. I land at 9.30, then I fly right back out at 1 a.m. Just come in the link with you, Kanye, my brother. Let's do this. Go fast. Hold on, I know how to do it. I know how to do it faster. You don't know how to work it like me. All right, should I meet myself? That's fine, yay. I'll be by myself. I really want to make this right. Hold on, 1,000%. I'm, I'm trying to make this right. This is what I tell a nigga. Go back up. All right, so that's that. So as you can see, Ray J is infuriated at Kris Jenner for lying about the origins of this sex tape getting out. Okay, let's get into Chris's numerology. So Kris Jenner was born November 5th, 1955. And with that birth number of five, communication is a major theme, media, television being a major theme, also, five can make one mercurial. It can cause one to go through many changes throughout their life, and they could be quite volatile. Also, five could be clever, crafty, coming up with a bunch of ideas as well. Now, her life path number is nine, and nine places much focus on the self. It's a number of self-actualization. Also, it's a number of independence. And nine pertains to men and masculine energy, also raw sexual energy, egotism. And with the life path number of nine, the life is often filled with conflict. So her ascendant is at the 28th degree of Virgo. That 28th degree is the come up degree, but it can also result in someone being too trusting. Also, the 28th degree deals with children. So with Virgo, that's grooming children. Also, that shows that she was groomed and trained for a husband because 28 also deals with husbands, men, significant men, including fathers. Learning manners and etiquette through her first husband, Rob Kardashian. More about that in a minute. Helping second husband, Bruce Jenner. Second husband latches on to her for help. New man has latched on to her for help as well. That's that uh, her new boyfriend, Corey. Corey Gamble, I believe his name is. Mercury is her chart ruler. It's at the 25th degree of Libra in the first house, conjoined to her second house cusp. So that conjunction to her second house cusp so shows that she's very focused on money and getting money through relationships. But that can always backfire where somebody's latching on to her for some money for some financial security like Bruce Jenner did in the beginning, also with this new guy. She's a perfect example of how the chart goes both ways. And it all depends on your choices. Once you know your fate, now that's where your free will comes in and you have to make the right choice. So marriage is a primary focus, especially in terms of money. A marriage to serve her selfish motives with Mercury being in the first house. Money through marriage is a primary focus with Mercury being conjoined to that second house cuts. Also playing the role of the matchmaker. Mercury conjunct Neptune strives to be taken care of by a spouse because this conjunction is in Libra. Strives to live the glamorous life. Also the diary. More about that in a minute. Secret affairs. Scandalous light, addictions, alcohol, and pills, perhaps. She loves to drink, but I would suspect that she also pops pills, too. And probably back in the day, she was snorting that Coke heavy because Scorpio and Coke go together like Coca-Cola and ice. Now, the sex tape, Neptune ruling video. 
Kim's son is conjoined to Chris's Neptune and Mercury. And that's forming a sextile with her Jupiter and Pluto. So this is showing that at least Chris Jenner benefited in some way through that sex tape. Being a sex slave to her husband, Rob, or being a slave, period. Cross-dressing spouts, reality show, keeping up with the Kardashians. The lie detector test with Mercury rolling that 10th house. Here's her chart again. So her moon is squaring Mercury and Neptune. So with this, this is her lacking privacy due to inviting media cameras into her home, family life, can be irrational and illogical. Indicative of a mood disorder, she could be on meds as a result. Being despised by the general public, her calculating and scheming mindset conflicts with her role as a mother, her partying interfere with her responsibilities as a mother, drinking and drugging hard, being a serious addict, Mercury and Neptune squaring Chiron and Aquarius, rebelling against her husband, Rob Kardashian's ideal of what a partner should be. Liberating herself from Rob's enslavement through having boyfriends on the side. That Chiron is conjoined to her fifth house cut. So fifth house is dealing with her children, but it's also dealing with her love life, her romantic affairs. Represents a husband who is weird, strange, or deviant. In that case, Bruce Jenner. But also Rob. The shocking revelation about Bruce. And also Rob was strange too in that he wanted a step for wife. Chris lied, so the lie detector test triggering a response from Ray J. And again, Chiron is conjoined to the fifth house cusp, so that's dealing with shocking situations or upsetting situations involving her children's friends or associates, which Ray J is one of. Communication is very strained between Chris and at least one of her children, perhaps. She may have made a pass at one or more of her daughter's boyfriends before. I wouldn't be surprised. Rob K's diary that provided details of Chris's abuse of Courtney and Kim. So again, as you can see, her fifth house cusp is zero degree Aquarius. Chiron's at the zero degree of Aquarius. So Chiron is coming into play big time with children and love affairs. Mercury and Neptune square Uranus and Leo. Lies being brought out in the open. Lie detector test triggered the raw truth from Ray J. So this is bringing it on home, this square right here. Especially with Uranus being in the 11th house. Receiving backlash on social media due to the truth about the sex tape. Truth is out about secret affair due to having Chloe. Partying with friends interfere with her role as a devoted housewife. Sleeping in separate bedrooms. Now, she could have did that, started doing that with Rob, or more so with Bruce Jenner, especially when Bruce started really coming out the closet. Representative of partners who are unusual, unreasonable, and very willful. Because with that Mercury and Neptune, Neptune's ruling her seventh house. So this square has a lot to do with her relationships, her marriage, Rebellion theme resurfaces, having lovers on the side and getting caught up, getting caught up out there. Being against Rob Kardashian's decision to represent OJ since Nicole was her friend. Mental disturbances. I'm suspecting that Kris Jenner has histrionic personality disorder. So let's get into that for a minute from WebMD. Histrionic personality disorder is one of a group of conditions called cluster B or dramatic personality disorders. People with these disorders have intense, unstable emotions and distorted self images. For people with histrionic personality disorder, their self esteem depends on the approval of others and does not arise from a true feeling of self worth. Mind you, Chris Jenner has that Scorpio son and Saturn in her second house, second house of self-esteem. They have an overwhelming desire to be noticed and often behave dramatically or inappropriately to get attention. 
The word histrionic means dramatic or theatrical. This disorder is more common in women than in men and usually is evident by adolescence or early adulthood. So again, the squares involving Uranus, Mercury and Neptune is really indicative of that histrionic personality disorder that she's dealing with. And also moon, square, Mercury and Neptune as well. And like I said, she has the sun, Saturn, also Neptune in the second house. Having Neptune and Saturn in the second alone can produce issues with self-esteem. Having your son in the second house in Scorpio could definitely produce some issues with self-esteem. So going on, WebMD says, in many cases, people with histrionic personality disorder have good social skills. However, they tend to use these skills to manipulate others so that they can be the center of attention. A person with this disorder might also be uncomfortable unless they are at the center of attention, dress provocatively and or exhibit inappropriately seductive or flirtatious behavior, shift emotions rapidly, act very dramatically as though performing before an audience with exaggerated emotions and expressions yet appears to lack sincerity, be overly concerned with physical appearance, constantly seek reassurance or approval, be gullible and easily influenced by others. Be excessively sensitive to criticism or disapproval, having a low tolerance for frustration and be easily bored by routine, often beginning projects without finishing them or skipping from one event to another. That's her Virgo rising with Mercury conjoined to Neptune and Libra. Not thinking before acting. Making rash decisions. Being self-centered and rarely show concern for others. Have difficulty maintaining relationships, often seeming fake or shallow in their dealings with others. Threaten or attempt suicide to get attention. So here are some trines that are working for her, Mercury and Neptune in Libra, trine Gemini, midheaven, but you can always take what's good in the chart and abuse it. Media deals, the TV show, Keeping Up with the Kardashians, Marrying Up is a conscious move for her that works it out in her favor. Mercury and Neptune, Sextile Jupiter and Pluto, turning her children into stars with Jupiter and Pluto being in Leo. Marrying men of power and prestige, hosting parties, soirees, orgies, casting spells perhaps, and being very good at it. Love spells in particular. Think Kanye West, Lamar Odom. Her Mars is at the 14th degree of Libra in her first house. That has a lot to do with how she approaches light. So with this, this is her being the matchmaker. Also, husband dominates her. So that would be Rob Kardashian. Husband lives vicariously through her. That would be Bruce Jenner. So again, she's a perfect example of how what's in the chart could go both ways. It could work out in your favor or it could work against you. So you always have to take that into consideration. Husband or boyfriend leans on her. So again, with Bruce Jenner and Corey Gamble, she attracted those type of men that are looking to her to, you know, support them and, you know, shoulder most of the uh, responsibility, especially with Bruce Jenner in the beginning. Finding a husband, being her primary focus, taking her husband's last name, attracting a lawyer, attracting a man who likes to impersonate women. So attracting a lawyer, that's Rob Kardashian, but then her also attracting a man who likes to impersonate women, that's Bruce Jenner. Later on becoming Caitlyn Jenner. 
Mars ruling her third house through Scorpio. A husband tries to will power over her mind, and that's Rob in that case. Mars ruling third house via Scorpio. She encourages Bruce to become Caitlin. Mars ruling eighth house. Psychic vampiric tendencies derives power through others, especially through men with that Aries on the eighth house cuts. So I'm going to skip over this video because I'm not sure if it's going to get a copyright strike. Plus, I have another video that I created that tells most of the story that's in here, if not more. Once upon a time, Kris Jenner was an American airline. So her Mars is forming a semi-square with Jupiter and Pluto. So that's represented a conflict between Chris and Rob over the OJ trial. Rob knowing about Chris's extramarital affairs, especially once Chloe was born. Venus semi-square Mars, her chronic infidelity, disloyalty. Also suing Rob's ex-wife over Rob's diary. More about that in a minute. So sun, 12th degree Scorpio. That 12th degree sacrifice victim. You've heard me say this before. So this is where Kim, because the sun represents children, but it also represents a husband, represents the father, represents a number of things, but children being one of them. Uh, Kim feigning the leaking of the sex tape, acting like she's victimized. Also, that 12th degree can produce greed. So that's Kris Jenner in general. Can make one outlandish. And excess is a major theme. So the 12th degree of Scorpio is also pointing to her first husband, Rob Kardashian, being a criminal defense attorney. Attorney represented by that 12th degree because it breaks down to three, and that's Jupiter Sagittarius energy. And second husband being a triathlete. Scorpio could deal with, sun in Scorpio could deal with, you get with a man who's very fit, who's athletic, who runs marathons and shit. Endurance, test of strength, all that stuff. And the prominent theme. So marrying a man that's prominent is very sun at the 12th degree of Scorpio. Or just sun in Scorpio alone. A lot of uh, Scorpio women are very much attracted to men who are powerful in some way or men who can really help them to come up financially. Basically, these men got to be useful to them in some way. And usually that goes beyond sex, but sometimes women will just want to, Scorpio chicks just want the sex. But a lot of times they're going to separate those two, or it could be hard to get both of that in one man. So her son is forming a semi-square where her ascendant being on TV all the time triggers her insecurities and neuroses. So as you notice, well, if people have been keeping up with the Kardashians, you might have noticed that Chris has gotten more and more plastic surgery. Sun, Sesquy Square, Midheaven. Bad press, backdoor deals with media, paparazzi. Sun parallel, Sabiq. Wastefulness and lost energy, perverted morals, success in evil deeds. Sun conjunct Alfeca, honor, dignity, literate, brilliant, poetic, scandals, betrayal in love, sorrow through children. Sun conjoined to Acrux, interest in astrology and spirituality, metaphysics, sacrifice. So... A lot of people have speculated that Kris Jenner is a witch. I definitely believe she is, considering what's in her chart. Here she is, and this is what I'm talking about, you know, the plastic surgery that she's gotten over the years and how that one aspect is triggering insecurities. Both of these are actually... So her south node is at the 19th degree of Gemini in the ninth house. 
North Dota at 19 degrees, Sagittarius in the third house. So what I found to be interesting was at age 19, her father died in a car accident. And that's evidenced by that South Node Quincung Saturn in Scorpio. With Saturn being at the 22nd degree, that can deal with sudden death, that 22nd degree, especially when in Scorpio. So Saturn at the 22nd degree is a uh, sudden death of father. And then with the quincunx, with the south node in Gemini, that's through the car accident. Gemini rules cars. And 19, that's the age where her father died with that 19th degree representing that. And the 19th degree also pertains to fathers, husbands, children, because it breaks down to one. A very fortunate degree that can result in becoming famous, but ego could become overblown, especially with the North Node being at the 19th degree of Sagittarius. And how does her ego become overblown through keeping up with the Kardashians, the TV show, because that North Node's in the third house, third house is TV. Also common, which is Gemini, versus exotic, which is Sagittarius. So you could say with that Gemini self, no, she's coming from a common background. And in this lifetime, she wants to be exotic, hence her marrying Rob Kardashian, her, uh, you know, encouraging her daughters to go after Black men and other races, and also her being with his current boyfriend, Corey. And Bruce Jenner was exotic in his own way, too. Uh, run of the mill is Gemini versus cream of the crop being Sagittarius. So she started off being run of the mill and now she considers herself to be part of the cream of the crop, you could say. Prone to be in love triangles with the Gemini self note explains why she married an attorney and an athlete. Gemini self note often results in mother having a lot of influence over mindset. But back to the attorney and athlete. Sagittarius can produce a fine attorney and a good athlete. Here she is in her much younger days when she had Kim and Kim was a little girl. North known at 19 degrees Sagittarius in the third house. Politics. Politics is ruled by Sagittarius. So this quote right here pertains to this right here. Uh, the mom of six has told people she wants to run for political office on a platform of advocacy for single moms, saying she and Donald Trump have the same kind of DNA. If Mr. Weird Hair can do it, so can I, she's reportedly said. According to a credible source, she has so much confidence that talking about the presidency one day isn't out of the question for her. Had high aspirations even when in high school. Being on easy street, courtesy of husband and children, with that 19th degree representing both husband and children, Sagittarius, easy street, highly publicized life, very open with the media, with that North Node in the third house, keeping up with the Kardashians, again, their house is representing that television show. And that whole title, keeping up keeping up Sagittarius because that's like they're constantly growing and expanding. So we got to keep up with them. Multicultural environments, multicultural mindset. Sagittarius rules multicultural things, multicultural issues. Masterclass, mastermind. So people have called Kris Jenner a mastermind when it comes to media, marketing, and all that stuff. And she was featured on this masterclass video. So I'm going to play it right now. I think as the show evolved, so did we. And when you really sit back and think about it, I mean, really think about it like I've done in the past, and I've had a chance to reflect on keeping up with the Kardashians and how much fun that was and what an amazing chapter in my life. I realized that everybody was watching the family grow up right before their very eyes. And for me, it was some of the best years of my life. We've made mistakes, but then you turn around and correct that and pivot. And we have evolved to the place we are today because we've learned so much 
from a few of the mistakes, but also from the successes. The reason that the Kardashian-Jenner brand has had so much longevity is because it's sort of the perfect storm. I think that the foundation of the brand has always been the show. And I think the longevity of the show has nurtured the longevity of the brands and we get to create magic every single day, which is so fun, you know, to be able to work on product lines and fashion and, and now safely and things that I never dreamed I would be doing at this age. And just to be able to be on this journey and thinking that when we started, there wasn't even Instagram. So to have all these social media channels and, uh, you know, a new show that's airing in 2022 and life is good. I think it's. Okay. So Chris Jenner, that outfit was so Scorpio. Now her being very much into fashion, that's her Mercury conjoints in Neptune and Libra. Also just that Libra stellium period, Mars and Libra in the first house, but also the second house as well. Her son being in that second house, Neptune in the second house, very much about fashion. So let's get into her fifth house because fifth house, again, is dealing with children, which is a major theme in her life and also love affairs. So the fifth house cuts zero degree of Aquarius. That's like pure Aquarian energy. So that means that the themes of Aquarius are going to be extra pronounced in her life, especially dealing with fifth house matters. Again, children, love affairs, sex, goals for her children. So in the most benign sense, with that zero degree of Aquarius, she could have goals for her children, high hopes for her children. But it can also play out as objectification of her children because Aquarius is a sign of objectification. Aquarius is also about perversion, so perversion of children. Nudity, seeing her children nude, uh, basically not making a big deal about nudity. Uh, her being very much about her expressing herself in the nude because the fifth house also deals with your manner of self-expression. So being in the nude, she probably, you know, walks around in the nude all the time at home. Shameless marketing tactics involving children. Fifth house is marketing, but also children. And Aquarius is a shameless sign. Detachment. So detachment in terms of her children. Again, you know, you got to ask yourself, what type of mom would be okay with orchestrating a sex tape involving their daughter so that their daughter could become famous? So it takes a certain level of detachment to be able to do that, you know, it helps that you're more so of a friend to your child, which Aquarius on the fifth can be, instead of a mom. Very liberated in terms of her expression. Also having that entitlement and openly expressing it. Also her children's friends, Aquarius rules friendships and including romantic interests as well. So boyfriend, girlfriend, Children are trendsetters, have many fans and followers. A child that is different from the others, Chloe in this case, attracting weird, strange lovers, attracting a gay lover, in this case, Bruce Jenner. You know, now I don't think you would call him gay, he's transgender. Attracts lovers who are looking for added convenience. So Bruce Jenner, at least in the beginning, Maybe all the way through, because was he even working beyond being part of keeping up with the Kardashians? And Corey Gamble, her latest boyfriend. Here she is right here during her younger days, looking like a true Scorpio. Scorpio loves animal print. And that necklace looks like it's kind of like animal print. Like leopard.
Here she is right here, much older. As you can see, she has some fillers in her face. Look like she's got, you know, her lips done and she got some work done around the eyes, Botox, all that. I mean, she she tries. Something ain't right with this family portrait. But again, most of everybody that knows about the Kardashian family, Kris Jenner, uh, has heard that Khloe Kardashian is not Rob Kardashian's biological daughter. So Chloe is the one right here with the curly hair up at the right, right next to Chris. So this quote right here deals with this situation. But with the 1984 arrival of their third child, Chloe, the couple couldn't ignore an elephant in the room. They hadn't had sex during the time she had had to have been conceived. Chiron can join to that fifth house cuts, can deal with that, especially opposing Uranus and Leo. Uranus at the second degree of Leo in the 11th house. So Uranus is ruling the fifth house. So Uranus is ruling the children. Children become popular and develop a fan base following. And with Uranus being in Leo, it's just reinforcing the themes of the fifth house, reinforcing children. Children become trendsetters in the entertainment industry. Children are for sale. Marketing schemes for children. Making arrangements for children to become celebrities. Issues with the fathers of her children. Now, this video right here is about Kim Kardashian admitting that her mom, Kris Jenner, begged her to do Playboy magazine. Hey, Kim, how are you? Oh, how about the door now, Chloe? Now I can hold it for you guys. Good job. Chloe. Hey, Kim, what's the response been to uh, your Playboy spread? Um, really good. Yeah? Really good, yeah. Great. It's what is, a what? little creepy when people come up to me and are like, I just saw your I Playboy. I saw your Playboy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you sicko. Uh, <laughs> what, what did your parents say or have to say about it? Anything? Were they supportive? Or? Um, yeah, if you, yeah, on the show, my mom basically begged me to do it. She did? Okay, great. <laughs> Our dad loves it. Bruce. How's the, show, how's the show going, by the way? Are you guys doing another season or anything? Really good, yeah. We season two. Second season. Hello. Yeah. Can we get a picture with you and your sister? All right, that's enough of that. I could only take so much. There you go. Okay. Saturn, 22nd degree Scorpio in the second house. And that 22nd degree, I always tell y'all, it's about control or be controlled. So either Kris Jenner is going to be in total control of her life, or she's going to be under someone else's control. Now, remember... With her first marriage to Rob Kardashian, he was the very controlling one. So she was under his control, but then she rebelled with that Aquarius on her fifth house cusp. Chiron to join to that fifth house cusp. Like somebody like that is probably never going to be faithful to anybody, never going to be loyal to anybody. Submission and caution. So Saturn at the 22nd degree of Scorpio means that she has to either submit at times, again, in the case of Rob Kardashian, but it also means she needs to exercise caution, especially when it comes to like business matters, when it comes to situations that could be life-threatening. Issues with disciplining, controlling children, because Saturn is co-ruler of that fifth house. Children become very prominent and influential. Again, Saturn co-ruler of the fifth, teaching children occult practices, Issue with paternity DNA tests. So whenever Saturn is connected to the fifth house, you always got to think about the father of your children. Now, when Saturn is in Scorpio, that could deal with, hey, there's some issue with the father. Like the father may not be who you say it is. And there might be a need for a DNA test. Now, Rob refused to get one. And that's because he already knew that he wasn't the father. And why stick the knife in deeper and twist it? So Saturn squaring Jupiter and Pluto in Leo, willing to exploit her children for financial gain. Again, these aspects are connected to her fifth house. Explains her playing the role of manager, director of the sex tape. 
Chiron could join to the fifth house cusp, zero degree of Aquarius. Now, what's interesting is the glyph for Chiron, the top part does look like a K. And sometimes with astrology, things do come up like that, some crazy kooky stuff where it's like so literal. So that's her naming her daughter's names that begin with K. Also, wounds inflicted upon her children, especially involving friendships, associations, having a wayward child, intensifies the objectification of the children theme. Square Mercury, Neptune, and Libra opposing Uranus is dealing with the whole situation with this child that wasn't robbed. So here's another video clip about how Chris Jenner played or sorry, planned Kylie Jenner's entire relationship with Travis Scott. But also going back, that Chiron Square Mercury and Neptune and Libra posing Uranus is also dealing with the situation involving that sex tape. How relieved were you when Kylie and Tyga finally called it quits? Why are some fans insisting that Kylie's son is not Travis's child? Why are others blaming Kris Jenner for causing Kylie and Travis to have a toxic relationship? And did this momager really plan Kylie's relationship with Travis? Stay tuned because we've got all the tea on why Kris Jenner may have planned Kylie's entire relationship. A match made in heaven. Kylie and Travis were once a hot topic in Hollywood due to their quick, flourishing relationship. Though the pair currently have two very adorable children, many fans are insisting that Kylie's whole relationship with Travis was planned by none other than Kris Jenner. But first, let's take you back in time to the reign of Kyga. Kylie and rapper Tyga met when the rapper... Okay, I'm going to start right there uh, due to lack of time. But if you want to watch the whole video, it's called How Chris Jenner Planned Kylie Jenner's Entire Relationship with Travis Scott. Because she's going back in time. I don't got time for all that. Now, Mercury and Neptune and Libra square Chiron. Again, represents the times when her children busted her in the act of cheating. Kim Kardashian finding Bruce Jenner in her closet. Um... Y'all correct me if I'm wrong. Wasn't that a rumor that came out that, or maybe Kim Kardashian said it herself that one day she found Bruce Jenner like rummaging through her clothes in her closet for something to wear. Kids will do things that ruin her plans and schemes. Because again, that Chiron can deal with kids that are unruly, that are rebellious, that are ruckus, that are crazy in some way will play the victim when her children stand up for themselves. The information coming out about her abuse of Kim and Courtney and Rob K's diary. Chiron opposition yearnings. Having strange or unusual goals for her children, viewing her children as exceptional, receiving backlash for objectification of her children, will turn her back on a child if they become too rebellious. I believe she will do that. Instrumental in getting her children to undergo drastic changes, including the plastic surgery. And with that Chiron conjoined to that fifth house cuts, that can deal with her children are very artificial, which they are. Some of them don't even look like they used to. Now she got a couple of yachts, one involving Jupiter, Pluto, that Gemini in heaven and Chiron. So this is pertaining to the love triangle that resulted in Chloe and also the media frenzy that resulted from the from Bruce becoming Caitlyn, the diary situation involving Rob's ex-wife. She has another yacht involving Venus, Chiron, and the Midheaven, the diary situation again involving Rob's ex-wife and the love triangles. Here she is with Kim. I guess she encouraged Kim to go bleach blonde like that. Aquarius can deal with bleach blonde. So with Aquarius on the fifth, you could have a child with bleach blonde hair. Moon at the 23rd degree of Cancer intercepted in that 10th house. This is her about being the HWIC, the head witch in charge. Also, she could belong to an actual coven and maybe be the head of that coven 
with that moon being in the 10th house, intercepted in Cancer, mind you. Also, remember I said Cancer is the pimp of the Zodiac. So where her moon in Cancer, that's her being a pimp, pimping out her children, pimp of the year. Pimp game started with her mother, though. So this quote deals with that. High school pal Joan Zimmerman thought Chris's mom, Mary Jo, was kind of pimping her out when the 17-year-old started a relationship with golf pro Cesar Sanudo, who was more than 10 years her senior. So mom was the one who encouraged uh, Chris to be about that pimp game. Family and private life highly publicized. Showcasing homes, I've seen a couple of those. Uh, it was like Architectural Digest where she was showcasing her home, especially during the Christmas season. She has like all these different Christmas trees. Raised by a maternal grandmother. Race and culture are major themes. So that 23rd degree does deal with interracial affairs. Executive decision-making as a mother being a director a strong need for a lot of recognition. Explains why she gave her daughter's name that began with K. So again, oh, and then I'll show y'all that Chiron glyph. I'm gonna show y'all again where it looks like a K. But um, when you have a cancer moon like that, you could very well do that with children, like name them all names that begin with the same letter. Cause cancer is about mirroring, familiarity, things being reflective of each other, things being very re closely related. So moon square Neptune in Libra, becoming so immersed in the lives of others, Black lovers like O.J. Simpson, Black music, that it started to rub off on her. As you can see, she has two of her daughters with, you know, braids in their hair, the kind of braids that are kind of more Afrocentric, I guess you could say, for lack of a better term. This square can be a cultural appropriation aspect if you believe in that concept. I'm not the type that be throwing that race card like, oh, that's cultural appropriation. But some people would consider that to be. Addictive personality, which she has. Scandalous behavior. Lacking boundaries. Especially in terms of being a mom. And she did, again, she encouraged, she actually begged Kim to pose for Playboy, and she posed for Playboy too, alongside of Kim, I believe my memory serves me correctly. Also, reality shows sometimes took a toll upon her emotional well-being with this square. Moon opposition Chiron can make her feel disconnected from her own race. Born in 1955, Chris Hawking came from redneck roots, it was reported as saying, being influenced by friends and associates approaches friendships from an opportunistic standpoint and need to be accepted into the in crowd. Receiving backlash regarding her role as a mother, some of it really hurts her, I believe, because she got a cancer moon, so she is tenderhearted to a certain degree. I mean, it is in the 10th house now, but her moon is conjoined to the asteroid Diana, and this deals with this quote right here, Chris wasn't dreaming about prom or college, but looking for a man, a rich one. Mom hooked her up with a man 10 years her senior. So Diana deals with hunting and, you know, you hunting for something. So that's dealing with her mom, helping her hunt for a man that had some money. Moon co conjunct Pollux, that's a star that deals with contemplative speculation, audacity, astrology, ruin, disgrace, death, calamity. It's known as the immortal twin and the heartless judge. Moon parallel, Celis Australis. Speaking about the heartless judge, when uh, OJ was acquitted, that could have dealt with um, Chris seeing the judge that way. Because, you know, Nicole Brown Simpson, the one that OJ allegedly murdered, um, that was her friend. Moon parallel, Celis Australis, that could deal with horrors, being self-willed and uncooperative. So let's get into her marriages a little bit deeper. So here she is at her wedding to Rob Kardashian back in the 70s. And here she is with Bruce Jenner. I believe this was the late 80s. 
or mid 80s. So I created a video where I read this article and it helps to give more insight into Kris Jenner's marriages, especially her marriage to Rob Kardashian. And yes, that's my voice that you're gonna hear. It's sped up and I had to speed it up because I recorded, well, I was reading the article late at night. And then when I listened to it, I was like, oh my God, I sound so like dull and slow. So I sped it up, not realizing that it would make my voice sound cartoonish. But I was like, I think it's kind of funny. And I think it kind of lends to the clownish behavior of this whole Kardashian family. I found an article that provides some insight into Kris Jenner's first marriage. The shocking, scandalous marriage of Robert and Kris Kardashian by Dory LeBlanc. You probably think you know everything there is to know about Kim Kardashian and her siblings, but there is a little known prequel, the twisted story of her parents Robert and Kris's tempestuous marriage, which was marked by rampant philandering and scandal. Author Jerry Oppenheimer's book, The Kardashians, an American Drama, reveals patriarch Robert's infatuation with Elvis Presley's ex-wife, Priscilla, Chris' repeated infidelity, and Robert's confession to his pastor that Khloe Kardashian wasn't his biological daughter. Here, the highlights. Forever immortalized as the standby, his man supporter of pal O.J. Simpson, Robert Kardashian rose to notoriety when he served as a legal consultant on the Dream Team that won the athlete a not guilty verdict in his infamous 1995 murder trial. Robert, a born-again Christian of Armenian descent, was born in 1944 to a wealthy Los Angeles family. He would later distance himself from the clan's corrupt meatpacking empire. Despite standing a mere five foot eight and being stricken with a thick white hairline streak in his otherwise jet black mane, he was considered one of Beverly Hills' most eligible bachelors in the 1970s. Born in 1955, Kristen Chris Halton came from redneck roots. Hey, I'm a redneck woman and you stay off my lap. And was raised in San Diego by her tough as nails maternal grandmother after her alcoholic father left when she was seven. By 12th grade, Chris wasn't dreaming about prom or college, but was looking for a man, a rich one. High school pal Joan Zimmerman thought Chris's mom, Mary Jo, was kind of pimping her out when the 17-year-old started a relationship with golf pro Cesar Zanudo, who was more than 10 years her senior. That ended when Chris met Robert, who thought the teenager looked like a young Natalie Wood, despite a necklace that read, oh shit, at a horse racing track and cheated on her boyfriend with him. As Jack Spradlin, a friend of Sanudo said, Chris saw a far better financial opportunity with Kardashian than with Caesar. Still, Robert thought Chris was too young for things to be serious and soon dumped her for Priscilla Presley. He may have been besotted with the famous ex-wife of Elvis, but she only went out with Robert because she had no one else to go out with, according to a cousin. A worldly and kinky Presley ruined Robert, telling him how to dress and what kind of car to drive. The relationship, however, would never escape the specter of her famous ex. Robert complained to a friend that while he was making love to Priscilla, she would get incoherent phone calls from her ex-husband, Elvis, and she would put the receiver on the pillow between them and let him listen, Oppenheimer writes. Robert aimed to turn Priscilla into the perfect Armenian housewife. Priscilla once tried to make dinner for Robert because he kept asking her, said Joni Migdal, his friend since childhood. She cooked asparagus, and she made this, and she made that. She went off her way to make it perfect for him, and he hated it. Priscilla was insulted. Soon, she told Robert, I'm not going to marry anyone until Elvis dies. He wasn't lonely for long. A heartsick Chris, by then an American Airlines flight attendant, had been destroyed by Robert's relationship with Glam Priscilla and readily took him back, moving into his Beverly Hills manse right away. He was a lawyer and entrepreneur who made a killing with one of his investments, driving both a Rolls Royce and a Mercedes. She was scraping by and had nothing to her name. Still, her fancy beau refused to give her money for anything, including much needed new tires for her old Mazda. She needs to learn the value of a dollar, Robert told McDowell. Ironically, this would backfire on Robert after he married Chris in 1978. Once they share bank accounts, she would rebel against his prior constraints by becoming monstrously extravagant. <laughs>
When she dropped three grand on a single belt, her husband was apocalyptic. Can you fucking believe that? Who needs a belt for $3,000? Where he failed to mold Priscilla into the perfect submissive housewife, Robert was determined to succeed with young Chris. Friends told Oppenheimer about he was totally turned on by the 1975 movie The Step for Wives. It was the model for Robert's marriage to Chris, said McDowell. According to another friend, he had a fantasy about being able to dominate women. As a way of grooming his high school educated bride, Robert gave her self-help audio tapes to teach her how to throw a party and decorate for the holidays. Chris would say, oh God, I have to finish these tapes before the week is out because we're going to talk about them, recall friend Larry Cranes. Robert, who had adorned his car with a fish insignia to show his born-again status, kept copies of the Bible on his nightstand, on his desk, and on his person at all times. While Chris attended church with her husband, Robert's pastor, Ken Gullickson, harbored doubts about her sincerity. I just sensed that Chris saw in Bob a kind of gold mine. Robert was a very generous man, and that was good for Chris. After daughters Courtney and Kim were born in 1979 and 1980 respectively, the family moved into a 7,000 square foot estate in Beverly Hills' most prestigious section complete with tennis courts and a duck-shaped swimming pool. Chris' audio tape lessons had paid off, and the home became party central. They often hung out with Robert's friend, O.J. Simpson. Sometimes Simpson would have Chris call a very young girl, possibly still in high school, whom he was seeing in case her parents answered. Then she would hand him the phone. It seemed the family was flourishing. Robert had sold one of his businesses, the trade publication Ready on Records, for a bundle. But with the 1984 arrival of their third child, Chloe, the couple couldn't ignore an elephant in the room. They hadn't had sex during the time she had have been conceived. Gullickson recalled that it was my strong impression from him that Robert loved Chloe very much, but he said it in a way that implied she's not my blood daughter. Yes. You are not. <laughs> he was unwilling to take a DNA test to confirm it and told McDowell that whoever her father is, she is my child. Years later, his two subsequent wives, Jan Ashley and L. Pearson, attested that Robert claimed that Chloe wasn't his biological daughter. Soon, Chris's affairs would be more out in the open. Despite all the blessings and bling of a charmed Beverly Hills life, she became bored and rebellious. After getting a new pair of breasts, she reportedly decided she wanted freedom. Chris would tell Robert, I need to go out. I need to have fun, McDowell said. Them days of not having a life is all over. I ain't like Big Mama. I got to have me some fun. She was coming home at 2 and 3 in the morning drunk, and she would tell Robert, I have four kids, and I have not lived life. Son Rob was born in 1987. Chris began seeing a soccer player, Ty Waterman, introducing him as her boyfriend at parties and paying his bills with Robert's money. Waterman recalled that a young Chloe would go with them on dates. She'd be in the back seat of the car. Once after Chris told her husband that Waterman was her tennis instructor, the two played on the Kardashian court while Robert watched. But soon enough, Robert caught Waterman and Chris three different times, she said, including at the other man's apartment and on a restaurant date. Upon finding them together in Waterman's car one time, Robert jumped out of his Mercedes with a golf club in his hand. He took a swing and whacked the back of my car, said Waterman. Chris told him to keep driving. Robert might have a gun in the car. Another time, as Simpson stood by, Robert phoned Waterman and yelled, You just fucked Snow White. Do you know what you've done to this entire universe, you asshole? Now you have to deal with me. The Kardashians finally divorced in 1991. Months later, Chris married Olympian Bruce Jenner, her best lover. Jenner, who decades later would transition to being a woman named Caitlyn, had already wed twice before. After his first wife, Christy Crownover, left him, he stayed for a while at the Playboy Mansion. Bruce became like one of the bunnies, said a longtime mansion regular. One night, he's boogieing in a tux with the girls at a dress-up party, and the next night, he'd be like one of the girls and all dressed up, makeup, hosiery, high heels, the whole nine yards, honey. I thought he was just being funny, like when Milton Burl used to come on TV and drag. He may have been one of the most famous athletes of the 1970s, but by the early 90s, Jenner had little money and was living in a dumpy little house. 
When he moved in with Chris, Jenner brought along his parents. Simply put, Oppenheimer writes, Chris was very pissed off, according to friends. She would apparently get over it. However, with the two going on to have daughters Kendall and Kylie and star together in the reality TV series Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Robert, meanwhile, was about to become a household name. After bosom buddy Simpson was arrested in 1994 for the murders of his ex-wife, Nicole, and her, her friend, Ron Goldman, Robert chose to steadfastly support him, showing up to court nearly every day as a member of the athlete's legal dream team. He wrote a letter to Chris and his kids in 1995, once the trial was in full swing. I truly believe in OJ's innocence, and unless they find him guilty, I will continue to support him. Please be understanding. Chris, who had been one of Nicole's closest friends, was furious with her ex's defense of OJ. Years later, Courtney would get into the University of Arizona with an essay titled, My Parents Were on Opposite Sides of the OJ Simpson Trial. Elsewhere in Robert's life, reactions were mixed. Some friends and colleagues deserted him. No one ever turned their back on someone like they did on Robert over the OJ thing, recalled McDowell. People would spit on him while he was in his convertible. On the other hand, he often got celebrity treatment because of the public fascination with the televised trial, snagging the best tables at Beverly Hills restaurants. Roger Moore saw him out to chat after Rod Steiger sent wine to his table. Robert hoped that Al Pacino or Robert De Niro would play him in a future OJ movie. Little did he know, he would instead end up David Ross from Friends Schwimmer. The fallout from the trial took a toll on the entire Kardashian family, but the kids were moving on with their lives, and the apples didn't fall far from the tree. By 2000, Kim was a bride at age 19. Robert was upset when Kim wed her first husband, Damon Thomas, who was African-American. According to an Oppenheimer source, Robert said, I know these black guys, and I know they love white pussy. OJ always brags about how much he and those guys get. Hey, where are the white women at? The problem is my kids are liberal, maybe too liberal, and I have no one to blame but myself because I introduced them to Uncle OJ. Because their fathers tried to keep it from them all their lives, when they turn 18 and they leave home, in 2003, Robert was diagnosed with esophageal cancer. When he died some eight weeks later, he reportedly weighed 80 pounds. Before he passed, Priscilla Presley called to tell him she loved him. It brought tears to his eyes, Oppenheimer writes. Years later, after Robert's kids became world famous, his widow, L. Pearson, who was said to have frozen out his closest friends, sold off excerpts of what was allegedly his diary in which he wrote about Chris and Waterman sleeping together in his bed and leaving their kids unattended while she screwed all night. It detailed Chris's allegedly abusive nature, describing her as pulling Courtney's hair and twisting her arms, also claiming that scared and nervous Kim had also been beaten by their mother. Chris sued Pearson in 2013 on the basis of copyright infringement claiming that Robert's kids owned the copyrights for his diaries. Pearson filed legal papers for defamation, emotional distress, and civil conspiracy to defame, claiming the Kardashians only filed their lawsuit for use as a plot point for their TV show. The copyright claim was settled in 2014 when Pearson returned the diaries to the Kardashians, who also collected $84,000. Robert's friend Cranes insists the late man would be as proud as punch of his girls today. Would Robert have liked Kim's sex tape and all that horses shit? Probably not. But would he have liked the fact that they have made a tremendous amount of money? Definitely. As for Chris, who divorced Jenner in 2015, sources say she wants to follow in the footsteps of another reality TV star. The mom of six has told people she wants to run for political office on a platform of advocacy for single moms, saying she and Donald Trump have the same kind of DNA. If Mr. Weird Hair can do it, so can I, she reportedly said. According to a credible source, she has so much confidence that talking about the presidency one day isn't out of the question for her. All right, that's that article. So back to her chart, she has the 28th degree of Pisces on the seventh house cusp. And with that, children, remember I said that 28th degree pertains to children. 
Children are a major theme with the 28th degree. Secrecy surrounding a child. Trust is a major theme with the 28th degree. The come up degree, but you could lose a lot at some point. Also, this shows more than one marriage. Pisces on the seventh can deal with multiple marriages, but especially if it's the 28th degree, lies, secrecy, deception in marriage relationships. She could be putting spells on a partner and or other people. Feeling trapped in a relationship, which she did with uh, Rob Kardashian and also Bruce Jenner. Sacrifices. Husband takes care of everything, being sheltered. In that case, it was Rob Kardashian. Being spoiled and pampered by husband. Again, more so Rob Kardashian. Being enslaved by a husband. That's dealing with Rob again. Husband is a simp. In this case, Bruce. Devotion. But even uh, Rob, because he totally like was a sucker for her once you know she had that child outside the marriage. Devotion. Husband, Bruce Jenner in this case is a cross-dresser, secret affairs. Husband, Rob Kardashian, makes visits to jails and prisons as a defense attorney. Also the secret affairs. Also being on camera, being filmed all the time. Also both husbands being on camera. She also has Pisces just spanning that whole six house so that it could deal with filmmaking video production and all that. And also her not wanting to work. From author Jerry Oppenheimer's book, The Kardashians, an American drama. Jupiter conjunct Pluto and Leo represents this quote. Chris repeatedly, or sorry, Chris repeated infidelity in Robert's confession to his pastor that Khloe Kardashian wasn't his biological daughter. Mercury conjunct Neptune and Libra, this quote. As a way of grooming his high school educated bride, Robert gave herself help audio tapes to teach her how to throw a party and decorate for the holidays. Again, this conjunction is related to her seventh house because Neptune is ruling her seventh house. Also this quote, Robert who had adorned his car with a fish insignia, Pisces ruling fish, and also uh, ruling devotion, worship, to show his born-again status, kept copies of the Bible on his nightstand, on his debts, and on his person at all times. He must have saw some scary shit as a defense attorney that scared him straight into Christianity. Moon square Neptune, and again, this is in relation to her relationships, marriage, where he failed to mold Priscilla into the perfect submissive housewife, Robert was determined to succeed with young Chris. Friends told Oppenheimer about how he was totally turned on by the 1975 movie, The Stepford Wives. Chris Best as a housewife was never good enough for Rob with this square. Chris need to be this worldly woman made Rob feel like a chump because that moon's in the 10th house. Her need for personal recognition was too much for Rob. Rob Kardashian being embarrassed by Chris's mingling with Blacks. Rumors about Bruce Jenner being a cross-dresser. So let's get into a little bit about this situation with her current boyfriend, Corey. Okay, well, who is this guy? We don't know you. Chris Jenner and Corey Gamble are one of the weirdest and most bizarre couples in Hollywood but they've somehow managed to stick it out for eight years now against all odds. You see how she said weirdest and bizarre that Aquarius on the fifth, Pisces on the uh, seventh. But there's a lot of drama going on behind the scenes. Which red flag did Kanye point out about Corey? How has Corey managed to manipulate Chris all through their relationship? And why did Kim call out Chris for being a hypocrite when it comes to Corey? Light years apart. One of the most bizarre things about Kris Jenner and Corey Gamble's relationship is the massive age difference between them. For those who don't know, Chris is 66 years old, while Corey's 41, which means that he's 25 years younger than she is. For context, he. That right there is Uranus and Leo ruling her fifth house, her going after a much younger man. 
He's the same age as Chris's second child, Kim. This age difference has always been a major topic when it comes to their relationship because many people feel like Corey is just a boy toy to Chris. For example, this person called Corey a glorified sugar baby, saying, Corey doesn't like Chris and it's really giving sugar baby. And this other person simply said, Corey is Chris's boy toy. Now, Chris and Corey started dating in 2014, which means that they've been together for about eight years already, which is longer than everyone thought that the relationship was going to last. From the very start of their relationship, Chris had been trying to convince everybody that the age difference isn't a big deal to her and that Corey's the perfect man for her, even though he's way younger than she is. But it looks like Chris might Let me just stop right there. This is one of the situations where you could tell she's just with him for the sex. She ain't taking him seriously as a romantic partner, so she knows very well that he's with her for more convenience to his life for the money. Make no mistake, she already knows what's going on. But, you know, like I said, you'll have Scorpio women, they have a clear line between, you know, a man that's giving the good dick and a man that's a provider that's supporting them financially. If they can get it in one man, that's great. But a lot of times it's not, you know, happening like that. Might not have completely been honest about her feelings about the age gap. As you know, Kim started dating Pete Davidson in 2021, and Pete's about 13 years younger than Kim. Of course, this raised eyebrows at the time, but like her mom, Chris claimed that the younger man was perfect for her. But according to reports, Chris wasn't exactly on board with the relationship at the start because she thought that a 13-year-old married. It was obvious that Chris was hurting, and many people thought that she was going to take her time to fully heal and process the divorce before entering into another relationship. But this wasn't the case, because Chris started dating Corey just a few weeks after this. This was surprising, but it was also super obvious that Chris was using him as a distraction to get over her heartbreak and her troubles with Caitlyn. This led to a showdown between the girls and their mom on an episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians, after Kanye West texted Corey to accuse him of being secretive. Kanye texted Corey something really rude. Kanye was like, I think it's weird, like we've never met his family. That's weird. Again, the secretive, that's that Pisces on the seventh house cuts. Moving along. I mean, of course. All right, here, 28 degree Pisces on that seventh house cuts. And again, that 28 degree is the come up degree. So that's representing Corey trying to come up through Chris Kardashian, I mean, Chris Jenner. But again, I believe she's just dealing with him because he probably got a big dick, the BBC. And uh, she already know what it is. Moon square Neptune, Neptune ruling that seventh house. This quote right here, Robert was upset when Kim wed her first husband, Damon Thomas. Remember, Kris Jenner's moon is in cancer, cancer rules rapes, who is African-American according to an Oppenheimer source. So remember this quote was in the video, in the article that I read. The Kardashians finally divorced in 1991. Months later, Kim or sorry, Chris married Olympian Bruce Jenner, her best lover. Now her having the best lover or a guy that really puts it on her physically, that's at Mars in the first house. So he probably was a really good lover, like physically. Moon square Neptune, Bruce became like one of the bunnies. So the cross-dressing part, again, this quote was in the article that I read, so I'm not going to beat a dead horse. Venus conjunct Saturn and Scorpio, Moon square Neptune. So again, this is about him being one of the Playboy bunnies and also about him moving his parents and basically showing that he was very dependent upon her. When you have Venus conjunct Saturn and Scorpio, it could go one of two ways. You could use that to be a gold digger or you might be the one shouldering most of the responsibilities. Here's that conjunction right here. That Venus 29th degree, love triangles all day. Venus squared Jupiter and Pluto. So this right here is dealing with this quote. They often hung out with Robert's friend, OJ Simpson. Sometimes Simpson would have Chris call a very young girl, possibly still in high school, whom he was seeing in case her parents answered. Then she would hand him the phone. So again, she's like underhanded, low down, even when it comes to helping her friends out. High infidelity, 
Control is a major issue in her relationships. Attempts to suppress the truth, but it doesn't work. Represents Bruce's gen Bruce Jenner's financial insecurity when he got with the kids. Hey, you win some, you lose some. Represents the fallout in the media regarding sex tape with Kim and Ray J. Produces salacious news in general with Venus and Scorpio being in that third house. Her dispute with Rob K over OJ's trial. Jupiter and Pluto are in the 11th, representing the death of her friend Nicole. Jupiter conjunct Pluto and Leo is representing this quote. He, Kardashian, made a killing with one of his investments. Instances of infidelity resulting in an Ill illegitimate child. He was unwilling to take a DNA test to confirm it. Rob was very controlling and domineering. Also, this makes me think that Chris has been involved in sex, eyes wide shut parties, matchmaker theme for children resurfaces with Jupiter being co-ruler of that seven pouts. Representative of Bruce being a transvestite wearing Kim's clothes. Jupiter, co-ruler of Se Seventh House, conjunct Pluto and Leo. So again, that step for wise theme, this is representing Rob Kardashian wanting to dominate women. Her getting with a man that's like obsessed with domination and power. Jupiter and Pluto conjunct Regulus. Regulus is one of the most fortunate fixed stars in, in the heavens. It deals with nobility, ambition, alertness, great power, status, leadership, but also sudden downfall, accidents, and violence. So it's not all good. Jupiter and Pluto quincunx Chiron, again, controlling husband, triggers her inclination to have illicit affairs, basically triggering her to rebel with Chiron being an Aquarius. A child is created in the process with Rob being aware that the child is not his, treats her like his own regardless. Chris objectification of her children due to her insatiable desire for money, her struggle to maintain control over a rebellious child. Bruce, AKA Caitlyn Jenner struggles with her totalitarian ways. Bruce, AKA Caitlyn Jenner's challenges with maintaining a masculine facade. The rift that was created when Rob represented OJ Simpson during his trial since Nicole Brown was Chris's and this is dealing with that yacht. Also, that Jupiter conjunct Pluto and Leo is when, again, he was dealing with the conflict involving Chris and his friend OJ during OJ's trial for murder. And he was asking Chris to be understanding. I'm pretty sure he asked her to be understanding a lot with that Jupiter conjunct Pluto and Leo. Chris, who had been one of Nicole's closest friends, was furious with her ex's defense of OJ. So that's dealing with that. But also, Courtney doing a paper, an essay about it. Venus at the 29th degree of Scorpio in the third house, love triangles with that 29th degree, conflicts with home, family, motherhood, race, culture, women, food. She may have been bulimic at one point, especially when Venus could join a Saturn and Scorpio. Venus could join Saturn and Scorpio, marrying for status, marrying a high value man, gold digger aspect, control is a major issue. Relationships are highly publicized. Money through children, Saturn rule in that fifth house. Playing the role of matchmaker for children, spouses, a transvestite, psychic vampire, or you could say transgender in this case. Psychic, vampire, very calculating and devilish, very vengeful, occult traditions, orgy sex parties with Saturn rule in that fifth house. Venus and Saturn square Jupiter and Pluto, bad publicity involving children, coercing children to do certain things like the sex tape and it blowing up in her face. The 28th degree can be like that. Also, this right here is showing how Ra was being stingy with Chris in the beginning. Remember it said in the article, still her fancy beau refused to give her money for anything, including much needed new tires for her old Mazda. Also, she needs to learn the value of a dollar, Robert told McDowell. And then where it backfires, because remember I said, these aspects can go either way. 
Now she's being extravagant. She's spending up his money. He's losing his mind. So here it is again. So years later, after Robert's kids became world famous, his widow, Ellen Pearson, who was said to have frozen out his closest friends, sold off excerpts of what was allegedly his diary. And that's that Venus at the 29th degree of Scorpio in the third house. In which he wrote a, but if also the diary is pointing to that Mercury conjunct Neptune and Libra as well. It said, in which he wrote about Chris and Waterman sleeping together in his bed and leaving their kids unattended while she screwed all night. Now, that part right there is definitely dealing with that Venus Scorpio 29th degree, but again, also Mercury conjunct Neptune. It detailed Chris' allegedly abusive nature. The abuse is that Venus and Scorpio conjunct Saturn with Saturn ruling that fifth house, describing her as pulling Courtney's hair and twisting her arms. So the lawsuit is seen through these aspects as well. Venus is conjoined to the fixed star Toleman, which deals with occult teachings. Again, reinforcing the witch theme. Conflicts with women. So the first conflict being with Priscilla Presley, Rob's ex-wife that he left Chris for, but then ended up returning back to Chris and also Rob's ex-wife getting a hold of his diary. And yes, that's basically it. Let me know what you think. Um, that was a doozy. But yeah, she is one heavy chick, like her energy. So Scorpio. And so representative of how a dark-sided Scorpio woman gets down. So if you would like a reading, you could go to my website. My link is in the description section. I'll be back very soon with some more videos, including a live stream that I have coming up for y'all. All right. Take care. Peace.